In animation's history, there have been many great creations and works of yesteryear that have marked entire generations and inspired millions more works with their great ideas, standards, and concepts. One of these many animated works whose influence on the market has been immense and continues to be so today is Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is a series characterized by its large doses of action, charismatic and emblematic characters, visually incredible superpowers, and iconic transformations such as the classic Super Saiyan. Whether you've seen the series or not, anyone connected to the world of the internet today and even older people can recognize Goku or give some characteristics of his design like his spiky golden hair or the Kamehameha wave with his hands. Others can also get to know Frieza or Vegeta, who are also two of the most recognized and popular characters in the franchise. What does this massive success of the franchise lead to, man? It leads us to the fact that many anime, manga, and cartoons make reference to these absolute icons that we mentioned above, and there are moments in the different animated series that bring us back to particular moments or characters from Dragon Ball. Whether it's a simple spiky haircut, a wave of power, or an imitation of the animation style, cartoons always manage to find their way to reference and pay homage to those great works that inspired many of the projects that today are still on the air on television, networks, or streaming platforms and services such as Netflix or Disney+. Plus. Such has been the impact of the series in the world of cartoons that it's even transcended the barrier of the East and it's even in Western cartoons where they most end up referencing the work done by Akira Toriyama. In this video, we've compiled a number of the biggest references to Dragon Ball that have been made in Western cartoon series, both in recent times and at the beginning of the animation boom on television, in order to learn a little bit more about the most iconic elements of our beloved Japanese franchise and the things that cartoons take into account that give the most tribute to it. Johnny Bravo First of all, we have a pioneer cartoon that came to us through television in 1995, Johnny Bravo. In the episode called 20,000 Leagues Over My Head, Johnny's watching a TV show about two characters fighting each other, and that show is a complete reference to Dragon Ball and Pokemon, called Claim League 9000. Both main characters, both the hero and the villain, have appearances similar to Goku and Vegeta, the latter having skin of a green tone assimilating that of the original Demon King Piccolo. Given its age, that makes this one of the first cartoons from the West to reference Akira Toriyama's work. You have sacrificed story content for mindless violence and lack of structure! The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy Another pioneer in animation is The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. One episode, titled Chicken Ball Z, is an episode almost entirely dedicated to referencing Dragon Ball. In it, Billy and Mandy fight in an arena very similar to that of the Tenkaichi Budokai, and both use martial arts and superpowers, which in turn manifest yellow auras and spiky golden haircuts, resembling the main characteristics of a Super Saiyan. Mandy gets her incredible powers from eating Chicken Ball Z, and with them participates in a tournament, finally fighting Billy in the tournament finals. Chicken Ball! Codename, Kids Next Door. One of the most iconic and recognized references of Dragon Ball is made on the series Codename Kids Next Door. In the chapter titled Operation Report, every kid gives its own report of the mission. Number 4's report consists of him fighting the delightful children from down the lane, and the fight is a Dragon Ball reference. In the fight, Number 4 calls himself Forku, and his appearance is identical to that of a Super Saiyan in a martial arts outfit like Goku's. Also, Number 4 uses bubblegum to shoot a Kamehameha at his enemy, which combines all members of the delightful children into a multi-headed version of Frieza. The latter use their full power evolution to fight, and Number 4 transforms into what appears to be a Super Saiyan 3, but loses the fight when his hair takes on an uncontrolled size and doesn't let him fight correctly. Fairly Odd Parents in the renowned animated television program The Fairly Odd Parents, during the first part of the Channel Chaser special, a television program named Maho Mushi is introduced, where it can be seen that the main villain has a similarity to Vegeta during the Saiyan Saga, with dark bristling hair and both a scouter and armor in brown and green. The series consists of an action show referencing a large number of anime series and Japanese content. In the third part of the special, using the magic remote controls, Timmy and Vicky enter Maho Mushi, where in addition to anime-like animation style, both have powers that reference Dragon Ball with their energy beams and colored auras, and even with the designs of both, Vicky with a cape similar to Piccolo's, and Timmy with a martial art key similar to Goku's. This is the kind of super violent Japanese action show where I learn all of my evil babysitting techniques! Forget it! Final Space in episode 21 of the second season of the series Final Space, an animated television program broadcast by Adult Swim and TBS in 2020 until its cancellation in its third season, you can see how characters Fox and Ash are introduced to the chapter through a performance of the well-known Dragon Ball Fusion Dance in the background of the scene while his father speaks. Fox and Ash, my darling children. Amphibia. Another show that's referenced Dragon Ball is Amphibia. In this series, a clear nod to Akira Toriyama's original work can be seen by looking at the calamity powers of Anne Boonchui, the protagonist of the series. 
When Anne enters this state, thanks to the powers of the Calamity Box, her body is enveloped in neon blue aura, and her hair stands up slightly and also takes on this color as well as her eyes. Other gags of her transformation are the tree roots and leaves that come out of her hair and her armor in gold color when she reaches her full power. She's also able to shoot energy beams and fly through the air just like our characters can do throughout the series. Another of the most hidden nods to Dragon Ball within Amphibia are both one of the haircuts that Sprig wears when going to groom himself at a hairdresser's where he can be seen using Goku's hairstyle in Super Saiyan Blue and the combat armor that Sasha uses which turns out to be heavy like Goku's clothes or Piccolo's cape. Regular Show One of the most popular and world-renowned animation series of recent times was Regular Show. In this series, we also find a slight reference to Dragon Ball, this being also very special because it's part of the final special episode of the series. In a regular epic final battle, Pops faces anti-Pops, putting the fate of the universe on the line. In part 2 of the special, Pops watches all of his friends except Mordecai and Rigby die at the hands of anti-Pops and unlocks his titan form to deal with them. In this form, he becomes gigantic, his hair stands on end, and his body's enveloped in a crimson aura. He can also use energy powers very similar to a Super Saiyan, as has happened in previous mentions. Adventure Time Another series of great renown on par with regular show is Adventure Time. In episode 30 of its fifth season entitled Frost and Fire, the Flame Princess and the Ice King have a fight, which is clearly a reference to Dragon Ball, with a beam clash between the two of them. Flame Princess fires a beam of fire using the Turtle School Styles signature hand position for the Kamehameha Wave, while Ice King uses an attack very similar to Super Vegeta's Big Bang attack. Both attacks collide, generating a scene very similar to Vegeta's first beam clash when facing Vegeta for the first time, between the Kaioken Kamehameha and the Gallic Gun. Mad one of the series with the most references is Mad, a satirical comedy that parodies different series, video games, movies, and other media, which was broadcast on Cartoon Network until December 2013. In it, we can find three great parodies of Dragon Ball Z in combination with other renowned series. They're not references or nods as such, since the intention of the series is to use the characters of the original manga to create satires about it, but it is of great interest to mention the program and recognize its great work. One of the parodies is titled Grey in Anime, which parodies both the Grey's Anatomy series as well as anime such as Dragon Ball, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Sailor Moon, and more. In this episode, Meredith's character is checking a patient's heart rate, which they say is over 9,000, so Owen decides to transform into a Super Saiyan to treat him. Then, the other characters join the parody with their respective winks, such as Yu-Gi-Oh style medicine trap cards. Another of the parodies of the series is titled Dragon Ball TMZ, the 25th episode of the third season. In this episode, they use characters like Goku, Piccolo, Trunks, and Gohan to ridicule the most recognized stars of Hollywood, using the iconic powers of the series or simply laughing at the superstars and their jobs. The last great parody of Dragon Ball and Mad occurs in the episode 66 of the third season, entitled Go! Dragon Ball Go!, which parodies Go Diego Go!, a children's series. In this, Diego and Baby Jaguar are rescuing animals, but realizing that they can't help them all, Son Goku comes to their rescue, who tells them about the existence of the Dragon Balls in Shenlong. Diego helps Master Roshi's turtle, who gives him the remaining Dragon Ball thanks to the fact that Goku had given him the 4-star one. Demon King Piccolo appears and forces Diego to hand over the spheres, but Diego, along with the audience, are able to land a Kamehameha on him and take him out. Swiper the Fox, antagonist of the related series Dora the Explorer, appears and steals the Dragon Balls from Diego, who turns into a Super Saiyan and recovers them in order to make the wish to save every animal on Earth. Granted. Wait, Goku was an adult? But Piccolo is evil? Are we doing Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z? Just be glad we're not doing Dragon Ball GT. DuckTales In the 2017 reboot of the DuckTales series, we can find two great references to Dragon Ball in two different episodes. In episode 19 of the second season, we can see a scene of our main duck protagonist running through the hills while a large duck whale comes out of the clouds in the background, very similar to the scene where Gohan is running through the mountains while Shenlong appears from within the clouds in Dragon Ball Z's first opening, Chala Head Chala. In the previous episode, the 18th episode of the second season, is over 9,000, Huey must rescue his mother from a monster, but after seeing that his power is not enough, he receives a power up in his combat level surpassing the 9,000 units and transforming into a kind of Super Saiyan or Kaioken, sporting a reddish aura and with the hair on his entire body bristling with power. His power level, it's over 9,000! Teen Titans Go! In the reboot of the original Teen Titans series, Teen Titans Go!, you can see two major references to Toriyama's original series. 
The first of these appears in the 29th episode of the series, Starfire the Terrible, where she destroys Robin's styling gel, causing his hair to look flat. He tries to return it to its original bristly form, and in one of the moments where he combs through his hair, we can see how his hair takes the form of Goku's standard look. After a few seconds, Robin messes up his hair again, and the reference vanishes. Supercons to make love and walk across the rainbow to the pot of gold and end of it, which contains the redemption coins for breaking the rules. Robin then transforms into a leprechaun resembling Goku's Super Saiyan form and fights the leprechaun guardian of the pot of gold with super powered pinches, similar to the Kamehameha and other attacks from our favorite series. To conclude the fight, Robin charges all of his power into a super pinch that completely overpowers the leprechaun, forcing him to succumb to the group of heroes. Owl House Finally, in the current season of The Owl House, a cartoon launched in 2020 which has achieved vast popularity in recent times, a very clear reference to Dragon Ball can be seen in episode 9 of the second season in an episode titled Eclipse Lake. In this episode, Etta tries to turn into her Harpy Etta form at will, and to do so she uses a human training tape called Dragon Claw Z, on the cover of which you can see a character very similar to Vegeta with claws on his hands. Etta states that the tape talks about screaming deeply until letting out your inner beast, just like the characters in the original series do when entering any variant of Super Saiyan, mainly at the beginning of the series. It's also mentioned that the tape is about 30 years old, thus taking Dragon Ball as a reference from yesteryear itself. This looks ancient. What? No, it's only 30 years old. As popular as Dragon Ball is, there are surely many more references in addition to those already mentioned. The vast amount of winks, references, parodies, and tributes helps us to understand the deep importance that Dragon Ball has had in the world of animation in general and how much it's inspired artists over time and continues to do so, doing it day by day, project by project. Whether it's a direct reference or just a small tribute or wink, Dragon Ball is present in lots of audiovisual content, and this is a constant example of the resounding success and great impact it's had on entire generations. As these series continue to support the work of Master Toriyama, the terrain that Dragon Ball covers will expand more and more than it already has, and we'll be able to see more of these references in future cartoons and anime that are yet to come. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and comment and subscribe and be sure to come back to check out our next videos, which are coming fast. We appreciate the support deeply. Until next time, this is Alex for DBS Hype.